My name is D. Diablo. Uh, I was a devil, man. I didn't give a fuck. I've been in both adult and juvenile prison and deported. Lifetime banishment to Korea. El Pino is my baby, you know. It doesn't run without me. Uh, we're doing authentic Mexican cuisines. I try to make it as authentic as possible. Everything that we make from meats to sauces, I use Mexican peppers. It's hilarious, man, all these motherfuckers that come out now trying to be my friends. Oh, me, you're gonna be successful. Fuck you, motherfuckers. I understand that you're a Korean-American adoptee, is that correct? Yes. I was put up for adoption with my sisters and... Um, How many sisters do you have? I had two. We bounced around from several adopted families, and I went from families to group homes, and I finally settled into a family in, in L.A. My very first family, actually, they thought we were too difficult to manage. Were you ever abused by your family? I was abused, yeah. No, we just got beat up. It wasn't just getting hit. We were, we were beat and locked in the basement, uh, days on without food. Really? Yeah. And why would they do that? Uh, they just viewed us as bad kids. I don't know how bad a seven or eight year old can be, but I guess we were bad enough to be locked in a basement. Uh, to this day, I got a really bad relationship with my older sister. I think um, she was abused differently than me, and it kind of separated us. She ended up going to a lot of foster care. She ran away a, a lot. And um, I had my dislike for my sister, my older sister, because she abandoned me and, and, and my younger sister. You know? So she just ran away? Ran away and left us there, left us to get beat. She did the right thing. I guess if I was old enough to do it, I would have. My second family, they were, you know, she was just, she was a single mom, I think. She was abusive differently, I guess. I ended up going to foster home after that, I remember, because uh, I called her a bad name or something. She just, she just lost it and started hitting me. So after the second foster family, after the single mom, where did you go? I went to this foster care and um, I, didn't, I didn't want to be there. So I ended up running away with a bunch of, a uh, couple other kids. We ended up in lockup. They caught us. I think I was put into my first group home. I think I was there about a year and then they found me some fo foster care. I don't know if they got money out of, from taking us, but I ended up in LA. The parents were very good to us. They were abusive too. They were supposed to adopt us. I don't know the details of what went wrong. They, they weren't very good people. So that, also they also. <laughs> yeah, I, they, they would hit me. I would just, I would try to fight back. Why they hit you though? You're I don't know. Young. I told you I was I was pretty bad kid, but I don't think any kid deserves to get beat. But my grandma took me in and uh, kind of showed me the ways of her, her kitchen. And this third family, were they Korean or are no, they, were they? They're Mexican. This is like your Mexican grandmother. Yeah. My grandma started calling me D when I was younger. She used to have like fucking fresh milk delivered to her, right? Mm -hmm. And I saw this guy literally take half of my grandma's milk and put water in it. I think he does that with everybody. So she caught me pissing on him. Actually, so that's when she started calling me Diablo. So at the time, you didn't consider yourself Korean or anything, right? There were times that the kids viewed me as Asian. I got made fun of and stuff, and I got in a lot of fights. You made fun of me, or you did, or made fun of my sisters. Uh, I would fight. I adapted to the Mexican culture. You know, all my friends were Chicanos. It was basically, I was just a Mexican kid. I talked like them. I dressed like them. I acted like them. I never took that to school, though. I actually. Love going to school. It took me away from that violent life, violent neighborhood, and I yeah. love sports. In America, you can't play sports if you don't get good grades. You got to be at least a C average, I believe. So I took my academics very seriously. All the street stuff, gang life, I did not take that to school. You said you're, you're bad. Like, what does that involve? Uh, during this time, I went to juvenile prison. I hurt my adopted dad pretty bad. Did you end up killing him? Or? No, I didn't end up killing him. I just hurt him really bad. Uh, I didn't get really that much time. The judge kind of understood my background uh, about a couple of years. I've been in both adult and juvenile prison. Juvenile prison's far worse. What's, uh, what's juvenile prison like? Juvenile Wait. prison was scary as fuck, man. You always had to do this, always had to look back. Did anything bad happen to people around you? Uh, I've seen a couple of kids you know, die. You mean they kill each other? Like yeah, the, they kill each other, yeah. And what happened afterwards? How long did you spend there? Got in a pretty bad fight, so they gave me an additional year, so I did three years. You got out of prison, and then you belong to this gang now. What did you have to do as a part of the, the gang? The, the, the one I was part of, we were about making money, not beating each other up or shooting people. My older homeboys would show me how to make money, and I was selling drugs. 
how did you end up getting caught? This is when I just kind of ran into this uh, Korean adoptee and this guy wasn't doing too well. I kind of just took him in. Everyone told me not to trust this guy. Everyone told me actually not to trust an Asian. In California, Asians are quick to rat you out. I had him do something for me. He got caught and he snitched on me. And what happened afterwards? I went to jail. I went to prison. For? Mm -hmm. For selling dope. So you went in for how many years? I went in three years. Yeah. And deported, lifetime banishment to Korea. Is that almost like the option they gave you or did you have a choice? I didn't have a choice. To be honest with you, I think I was a little bit excited to get out of that lifestyle. Okay, so you were kind of looking for change. I was well. looking for forward to change, reading up on Korea and trying to get adjusted to it. I was really excited to actually come here and start a new life, to be honest. These are our five of our most popular dishes right here. Carnitas, carne asada, uh, chicken enchiladas, salsa verde, and brisket enchiladas. And, uh, we're probably the, the only Mexican restaurant here in Korea that use rib steak for their carne asada. Yeah, try our guacamole. Uh, our guacamole is different than anybody else here in Korea. Oh, it tastes so fresh. It's fresh. <laughs> oh, man. Holy crap. <laughs> That's so nice. How would you rank, in terms of the authenticity, um, your Mexican restaurant compared to all the other Mexican restaurants in Seoul? I actually get offended when people rank me with other Mexican places because I, uh, just, they, can't, they, can't, they can't touch what I do here. And I know, I know that because of years of hard work I've done to get to this level. This restaurant is gaining their reputation as you know, one of the best, if not the best, Mexican restaurant in Korea. How do you feel about that? Before I, I, get, I would get excited from like any reviews and stuff, now I just, I know it. I get a lot of shit from my wife, I get a lot of shit from my two partners. You know, they, the food costing is high, but then at the same time they realize that's why we're number one. The minute I feel like I need to cut corners, I just don't need to be an owner of, of, of El Pino. I need to get out of the business. What was your lowest point in Korea? I was young when I came here. So, excuse my French man, but you know, I, I wanted to party, get pussy and, and, and that's all I cared about. Describe your lifestyle to me. I just time. had an entourage. I drank every night and I just partied. Mm -hmm. I, I never drank before till I came here, so it was basically drinking was like a drug. How much were you drinking? Up to maybe 10 to 15, even 20 bottles of soju sometimes. And I had a little bit of money. And how long did that money last you? That didn't last me very long at all. So I was spending thousands nightly. I was homeless uh, one time in Pusan. I lived in Pusan Station for a couple months during the summer. So you were literally homeless? Yeah, I was literally homeless. How did you survive? I really didn't. I just drank. I just, just didn't want to think. Yeah, I guess you could say I was depressed living here. How did you overcome that depression? Um, my wife. I met my wife at my, the first hospital I went to. She was an intern. Uh, eventually she became my best friend because I was, she's the only one that could speak English. How did you meet two of them? 병원에서 제가 그 정신보건 사회복지사로 그 트레이닝을 받는 시점이었거든요. 이제 새로운 환자가 들어왔다. 근데 이제 영어밖에 못한다. 그러면서 사람들의 관심이 좀 가더라고요. 이제 인터뷰를 저도 하고 넘지 말아야 되는 이렇게 사적인 부분까지 동화가 되면서 얘기를 하다 보니까. <웃음> 네. 원래 캐릭터는 어떤 것 같아요? 되게 순수하고 좀 마음이 여린 것 같아요. She's saying you're uh, softy on the inside. Yeah, right. So my wife and I, we don't know, we don't have any kids, but this is Francisco, my one-year-old Scottish full cat. Very friendly, very loving cat. All the employees love this guy. He's got a stomach virus right now and he's really hungry. How long have you been with the cat? He's uh, he's been with us one year. This is our Hello. kitchen. Right now they're baking our tamales. You know, masa here in Korea is very expensive. 
There are a couple places here in Korea that do tamales, not this big. They're about like this, this big. This is our tortilla machine from Mexico. And Lily is preparing tortillas. Our prep is not easy. So these, the, the kids that come work for us, they work hard. I guarantee there's no other Mexican restaurants that do this daily. Wow. I'm really proud of the, the kids that work for me because working for me, we, we have a lot of rules. There's no shortcuts at, at, at El Pino, zero. And I won't have it. When the kids first come here, they, they're kind of like, wow, this is ridiculous, you know? But they realize there's a reason why I have all these rules. You gotta set boundaries and these kids follow it. And you know what? I do reward my kids for working hard for me. And I appreciate that. Did you feel like you always had a, a special skill set or talent? Cooking, food. I don't know, I discovered that ever since I was young. Just, I always played around with food. Even about the time when I met, met my wife, I kind of lied on a resume to a couple of hotels in Pusan, and I still beat out like their head chef. So how did you end up opening your own uh, Mexican restaurant? I've never had a previous experience opening a restaurant, but I've worked in a lot of other restaurants. To get to the point that we got to was me failing a lot. We didn't have any money to open our own restaurant. And she went out and she, she went out and found the money for this, you know. Now that you uh, were able to establish this amazing restaurant, many people would look up to you. Is that something you just like stop and think about? You know, I, I don't know. I've never sat down and talked with, talk with my wife about this, but what has kept us together is we both have that never giving up attitude. No, she never gave up on me. So the thing that I, about me is I just never gave up on trying to be a chef. Like again, you know, I've worked for a lot of other people and they didn't really treat me that well and that was also a motivation for me. When you look at people in similar situations, uh, the kind of situation that you might have gone through, what do you want to tell those guys? If you, if you set your mind to it, you, you can overcome it, man. I don't know what you want to do with your life, but feeling sorry for yourself is not going to get you anywhere. I am an example of somebody that had nothing, that built something for himself. And people might say, oh, he could have never done this without his wife. And they're, they're, they're right. But you got to also give that person a reason to stay. And I think she's seen that, you know, I just fought through a lot of adversity. What does adversity mean to you? Success. Adversity means success. Yeah. I was always a fighter. And I can almost guarantee all these people that doubted me, they fucking hate that I'm here at this position. They still want to see me fail. I'm not going to give them the satisfaction.